Give me an E, give me an N, give me an E, give me an R, give me a G. Why? Why did I start this video that way? With a cheer. Um, I don't know, maybe feeling uh, feeling energetic, something? I don't know. Energy. So uh, this video is going to be on, you guessed it, energy. All right, so energy is an agent of change, all right, meaning that it causes something. When an object can change its environment, it has energy, all right? So uh, a baseball breaking a window, the baseball has energy because it is an agent of change. It acts on the window and changes it, uh, probably not for the better. All right, um, energy is the ability to cause change. And as you guys know, um, we're going to go ahead and abbreviate energy uh, with a capital E. All right, so there's two types of energy. Some of this, guys, is going to be a review. Um, some of it's going to be new. So we're going to we're going to sort of piecemeal this thing together. All right, so we have kinetic energy, and we have potential energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy in the form of motion. So a spinning bicycle wheel, um, sprinting, or a flying frisbee. And um, you guys will uh, recall the rotational, transitional, etc. All right, so the amount of um, kinetic energy depends on mass and velocity of the moving object. Again, so this is going to be a little bit of review. Stick with me. Uh, the velocity is speed in a given direction. I got speed. All right, um, the greater the mass, the more the kinetic energy. Let me say that again. The greater the mass, the more the kinetic energy, the more Ke that it has. All right, the greater velocity the more kinetic energy it has. Remember, velocity is speed and direction. All right, so um, for example, does, it, does, it, does a truck traveling at the same speed as a motorcycle have more or less kinetic energy, and why? So does a motorcycle traveling 100 kilometers an hour have more or less kinetic energy than an identical motorcycle traveling at 80 kilometers an hour? And why? All right, potential energy. Now, potential energy is stored energy, as you know. Uh, it depends on, on its position or condition, the zero, the zero surface. All right, so um, a flower pot on a windowsill on a second story window has potential energy. So if it's knocked over, the gravity will cause it to fall toward the ground, and the energy becomes, it changes from potential energy to kinetic energy. All right, so the greater height is the greater potential energy. So for instance, the flower pot on, the lower, on a lower floor or on a fifth floor have more potential energy. And why? All right, so um, the video on potential energy, uh, go ahead and hang with this one, man. This is uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started for you. Dear Tim and Moby, why is kinetic energy important? From Melissa. Well, energy lets us do everything from running a mile to typing on a computer. When an object has energy, it has the ability to cause change. Kinetic energy and potential energy are the two types of energy that relate to motion. Potential energy is stored energy that increases or decreases depending upon an object's position and condition. Moby and I store up more potential energy the higher we go on this ski lift. Kinetic energy is the energy that an object has because of its motion. If it isn't moving, it doesn't have kinetic energy. Right about now, our potential energy is being transferred into kinetic energy. The amount of kinetic energy that an object has depends on its mass and speed. A fast-moving object with a lot of mass will have a lot of kinetic energy. Moby and that snow tractor are moving at the same speed, but the tractor is way bigger, so it has much more kinetic energy. Even if Moby was skiing as fast as he could, he would still have less kinetic energy because the tractor is so massive. Two snow tractors are a different story. Tractor number one is moving at 40 kilometers per hour, and tractor number two is moving at 30 kilometers per hour. Tractor number one has the greater speed, and that means more kinetic energy. Another cool thing about kinetic energy is that it can be transferred from one object to another when the objects collide. Moby's bowling ball only hit one pin, but they all fell down. 
the kinetic energy transferred from the ball to the pin that was struck and to all the other pins in a domino effect. What's kinetic energy good for? Well, besides being the reason why even you can bowl a strike, kinetic energy can be transformed to give us electricity. This dam makes electricity using running water. Moving water spins the generator's turbines, turning kinetic energy into electricity. Well, technically speaking, energy doesn't really run out. Energy is transferred and stored, but it can't be created or destroyed. All of the energy in the universe is here to stay. What? No, I don't think you should do that. Huh? Okay. I think it's time to use up some of our potential energy to create some kinetic energy and run away. All right, so I hope you liked it. Um, now let's talk about uh, law of conservation of energy, all right? So this is the, uh, the ideal, the idea that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it only changes state. Um, so this applies to a closed system, okay? So the energy cannot leave or enter. So this is a closed, contained system. So example, a swing would be a really good example of um, conservation of energy. So as you move back and forth, the energy is converted from kinetic to potential and back to kinetic, continuously, back and forth and back and forth. So you may be asking yourself, why does the swing eventually stop? Um, that because actually, technically, this is not a closed system. We have friction and we have air resistance. Okay, so without friction and air resistance, that swing would keep converting potential to kinetic and kinetic to potential energy forever. All right, so mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the total amount of kinetic and potential energy in a system. That's mechanical energy. So in that swing, the swing example, the, ent the entire amount of kinetic and potential energy, bring that together and you got yourself mechanical energy the entire amount of energy in the system. All right, so as you can see, so um, again, man, you know, with the bike example, what are you gonna do? So you've got energy in, uh, the dude going up the hill. Got potential energy, slowing down, and then you've got energy coming back out, back to converted ener uh, kinetic energy. This entire system is mechanical energy. Energy in, energy out. All right, so a fantastic example of mechanical energy is um, a pendulum. Check this out.